and it's like the, that little nuance of stuff that you really got to learn and people just like if you razz them once on the internet oh my god i'm being bullied and attacked humor is a way to deal with difficult situations it's yeah. important like that is a normal human thing like that's what we do as humans that's a huge problem too is this kind of assumption uh in the negative right like yeah. oh you know if somebody says something we're gonna assume the worst right every single time you, you default to assuming that it has to be the worst possible thing which get you know is a very nihilistic way to be and honestly is kind of your life is probably shit if you if you live like that the call to action and everything he was like Whoa. if you see someone being racist you should just fucking kill them in the street oh and i was like calm down dude i mean those people suck but they're humans and you should give them a chance to change and he's like no they won't change they should they just need to die Welcome to yet another Kitchen Sink Microscopy, brought to you by Elysium. Well, no, it's not. But hey, if there's any people out there that run that company or work for them, we could sure use a sponsorship. <laughs> I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and uh, we'd love it if you'd like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, all that jazz. It'll, it'll really help us out and help the channel grow. And I'm Casey Rochford. And for once, I actually happen to be drinking one of their beers, too. So pony up, mother. Anyway, um, if you want to hang out to the end, uh, we write our own music, and that's how we uh, pay the bills. Well, not really, but it helps. we don't pay the bills, do we? <laughs> well, we pay them, but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> you mean I don't pay my bills? Why do you think I'm broke? <laughs> that, that's what I was saying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Stick around to the end. You'll hear it. You should uh, find it at Spotify or iTunes, and Amazon, or Google, or all the other ones. I forget their names, but we're out there. So do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, what should we uh, do it tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're getting at. Here. It wasn't I mean, really a sentence we, either. So. <laughs> We are, I mean, we are pretty good friends, but I don't know if we're <laughs> that good of friends. <laughs> Although I'm sure there's some viewers out there who would pay to see that. Um, <laughs> but, I don't know if everyone's going to get the Godfather's Pizza reference. <laughs> pretty old, obscure, and possibly Pacific Northwest only. It might be. Yeah. So anyway. God, Godfather's is almost gone. So yeah, anyway, well, what are we talking about today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The question. Well, you know, recently, oh, wait, hold on. I got beer on my super expensive uh, musical instrument. Uh, there we go. Fixed it. <laughs> uh, um, that's what, that was from the, like, opening the can. Um, so recently, like, I, I posted some, you know, I shit post on Facebook and post a bunch of random stuff and rant and share music and things like that. But I was responding to a comment, some political thing from a friend, and I posted something, um, just a simple statement, and didn't think anything of it. Came back later and went to see uh, what was going on on the Facebooks, and there was this notification like, oh, your post has been found to contain like hateful speech or calls to action for violence and stuff, so it, it's restricted. And I'm like, what? What the hell? And I looked at it and it's like, all now, I mean, it's contextual, but all I said was kill them all, let God sort them out, which is a common, like 
common phrase like there's a lot of nuance a lot of different meanings that could be taken from it and from a political context you know it it doesn't necessarily mean going out there with a machine gun and killing people um and so i was like no 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 so i said no this is not that you know i'm i'm appeal it and then a couple minutes later um and that that that's important a couple minutes later I got a notification that's like, well, after careful review, we found that it's still in violation of terms of service of Facebook. But, you know, if you really feel like it's it's a legitimate statement, you can go to this Facebook fucking commission thing or something. And, and I thought, you know what? You assholes, are, you're the reason why, like, why not? I, I'm going to do it. You know, I'll go through the, the hoops and it redirected me like open a new tab and stuff to some official looking page with this big emblem that looked like some kind of government thing. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is weird. And I had to fill out all this information and stuff and explain myself. And, and so I did, I went, I went through all that and eventually it was, it was allowed to be posted. Um, But like, it's all bots. Like the whole entire thing is just bots looking at text, like the, the, the text that you say, and it's comparing variables together. And it's like, oh, this person said, kill them all. That must mean they're violent. They're inciting violence or something. And no, you know, the bots don't understand nuance. And even apparently people don't too, if they were carefully reviewed what I had said. Um, and so I kind of, you know, I, I think there's kind of a lot of things because we've been talking uh, or wanting to talk about uh, various forms of censorship for a while. And so I think it would be th- that should be what we discuss today is like censorship in, in any form, whether it be government or big tech or whatever, um, or media in general, censoring people, because I think this is something that that means a lot to a lot of people oh yeah there's a million angles to go off of from that like i mean that reminds me of a real life situation Uh, you probably remember this where uh, my ex-wife was trying to get this promotion at work and uh, her friend was also going for the same promotion and then her friend kind of like stabbed her in the back and talked shit about her and ended up getting the job over her and and I was all pissed and I I said something on on Facebook like to my wife at the time I think and uh didn't you say something like oh heads are gonna roll yeah it's heads yeah, are gonna I- roll like you know, like the Judas Priest song, you know, yeah, like, yeah, it's which just the does, same, you know, like, it, and it's the same thing, like the, the kill them all at God sort of out thing. Yeah. It doesn't, you're not implying you're going to be people beheaded. There, there's right. other meanings behind that. Yeah. Heads are going to roll. It's clearly be, just a phrase. Like, yeah. And, and, and nobody, even nobody talks like that when they're like actually going to kill someone. Like, no, no. In <laughs> fact, they probably don't say anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> some heads are gonna roll <laughs> it's the mustache twirling you know <laughs> evildoer but yeah. they they like they fired her they um put out like a not even not necessarily a restraining order or whatever but like there was like a i think they posted my face there and if i like came on the grounds or something they were to call the police because Somehow they got a bomb threat out of that too. Like what? I, I was like, what? I never even didn't even mention a bomb. <laughs> it must be the telephone telephone booth thing, right? You know, mm-hmm. someone tells someone something, and then pretty soon it's like, oh yeah, oh, Casey's about to bring a nuke, a briefcase <laughs> nuke into here and like blow everything up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, and, and that, that's stupid because it was something that you said. You said it wasn't even her. It's like yeah, somebody I, that I said it her. to her. Her friend was also on Facebook, so she saw what I said. And from that moment on, like I don't friend anybody that I currently work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's it's still not a perfect system, but like you know, I don't want to curtail what I say ever. No, mm-hmm. no, we shouldn't have to. I mean, what what you know, your experience is kind of like cancel culture essentially oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. Where you say the wrong thing that, that, you know, makes somebody uncomfortable mm -hmm. and they go set about ruining your life or, or attempting to at least. Mm -hmm. um, and which is yeah. just fucked up. Yeah. Judge, <laughs> jury and executioner. Like you, there's, there's no, there's no trial. There's no room for you to explain yourself. They just like come to a conclusion right. and carry out some kind of execution essentially. Um, like, well, Oh, I guess I probably shouldn't say that. Not an actual execution, but an execution of your employment or your career or whatever. I mean, the actual Friendship. law is like that too, you know. Yeah. Well, it like, is. Like if if somebody brought that to court, the courts would be like, well, it could be construed as a threat because mm -hmm. you know, the letter of the law is very clear and that's also very clear. <laughs> Even though it's totally not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man just a bunch of bullshit like I, people are just too uptight that's the problem yeah way too take, uptight well and they're, they're yeah you, you know they can't take a joke um yeah. and and like that that's something about humor that's kind of important is it should be a bit uncomfortable um and, and some of the funniest jokes are a little bit maybe risque or or daring or or make you feel a little uneasy or something like that um or maybe they're just over the top and yeah that could be funny too there's nothing wrong with that right i mean i've been i've, I've actually been thinking about this a lot lately as i'm venturing into uh, newfound fatherhood uh, yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> some kids that are you know mostly grown um i started thinking about like joking around and like razzing people and and stuff like that and you know like there's a fine line right like oh it's great to be able to like be sarcastic or you know tongue-in-cheek and you know like razz somebody a little bit but like if you keep doing it it starts to feel real and it kind of doesn't become a joke anymore and stuff and it's like the, that little nuance of stuff that you really got to learn and people just like if you razz them once on the internet oh my god i'm being bullied and attacked Quick, yeah. let's bully them more than they're bullying me by canceling them and, you know. well and, uh, yeah and oftentimes a lot of those situations the the statement is not directed at a particular person uh, okay. but it may be directed at some sort of identifying feature that that person connects with right like you make a fat joke or something, right? And then somebody who's overweight um, takes offense to it and they, they take it personally and they set about getting their revenge. Um, like uh, that that's not bullying. Mm -hmm. Bullying is when you single somebody out and you continually assail them with insults and, uh, you know, so, something that intent on making them feel bad. But simply making a statement or an observation or a joke about something, no, like people joking is actually like humor is a way to deal with difficult situations. Yeah. It's important. Like that is a normal human thing. Like that's what we do as humans is to, to deal with things like death or disability or or fear or whatever you know we we turn it into humor and that that's important like that needs to be allowed um yeah and then the, the hypocritical aspect of the, the whole thing is that uh i was formerly friends with this guy on facebook that um uh, he kind of went off the deep end so i had I ended up having to block him, which I don't do a whole lot, but he, um, and there's no way you could pass this off as a joke, right? He literally was calling for genocide of racist people. Like he was called to action and everything. He was like, if Whoa. you see someone being racist, you should just fucking kill them in the street. Oh. And I was like, calm down, dude. I mean, those people suck, but they're humans and you should give them a chance to change. And he's like, no, they won't change. They should, they just need to die. And uh, like, Daryl Davis is a good example of 
that people can change. Exactly. So, so like I reported that, right. And then, you know, you can check the little box when you report somebody that says, I I'd like to be, you know, have, have a follow-up on this. And not long after I got a notification saying it did not violate Facebook's policies. Wow. An actual call to action to commit genocide was fine with Facebook. Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. But then, you know, I jokingly mention, uh, you know, uh, a a phrase from like the Marines and stuff like that aimed at politicians and, well, that's not okay. Ooh, we can't have that. And the bots picked that up. You know, it does kind of make me wonder, like, what, what is the actual underlying algorithm there? Exactly. Yeah. Like, because I've said some really innocuous stuff and, and had it, like, flagged or whatever. Um, there was one guy that liked to call me a cheeky monkey when I was being a smart ass. And his, his uh, statement would get flagged as, you know, offensive <laughs> just because of monkey. The, what, but a monkey is an animal yeah right like that's an actual thing right um well it's because ignorant people don't know there's a difference between monkeys and apes and apes are the one that are like i mean not even apes like it's in the ape family gorillas are the ones that are like uh you know in a racially um sensitive way associated with black people not but monkeys. of course, like th- not th- cheeky monkeys. <laughs> no, no. I mean, monkeys are like this big. But yeah, but th- that that's a huge problem too. Is this kind of assumption uh, in the negative, right? Like, yeah. oh, you know, if somebody says something, we're gonna assume the worst, right? Every single time, you you default to assuming that it has to be the worst possible thing, which get, you know, is a very nihilistic way to be. And honestly, is kind of your life is probably shit. If you, if you live like that. Um, but all yeah. these algorithms are built around that. Um, and yeah, like, oof, man, it, Oh, geez. There's like you said, there's, there's a lot of angles that we could go down. Um, man. Um, so what, what about the idea that Facebook is, you know, a, not a private entity? I mean, they're publicly traded, but for, for the, you know, sake of argument, you know, let's just say private versus government. This is a yeah. private business. Mm-hmm. They, they technically can, you know, curtail whatever they want as far as people's speech and, you know what shows up on their feeds and all that stuff, but should they? Well, no, they shouldn't. Um, and, but can they? Sure. Yeah. Like you said, they're, they're a private company. And, and I would argue that public companies, that is government institutions should follow the same rules. Um, the, the principle of the thing, it, it, it's like people say, well, the first amendment only applies to government and, and only inward facing. Well, Yes, it does, but it's based on fundamental human principles like that, that we should hold dear at all times. Free speech, right? You, you should be able to speak your mind without any kind of, uh, I guess, punishment for that. Um, and and the, it's like, well, if a company wants to do that, sure they can but we should hold those companies to the same standards we hold every other organization to like to the government. If we expect the government to not um, limit people's ability to practice religions or uh, question things or communicate ideas, uh, well, it should apply to everything. Yeah. Um, and, and so to me, I think it's wrong no matter where it's coming from. If, if there's a private company, sure, they're free to do it, but it's wrong. And we should, mm-hmm. we should fight against that. We should definitely resist that. And, and yeah, yeah. I, I'm all for that because yeah, I, I think that the, the line is too blurred mm-hmm. between like 
you know, being the public and interacting with other people in public via this private company, I don't think it really matters that it's through their portal or whatever. I think they should be able to say whatever they want and everyone should be able to see it. Yeah. Uh, you know, indiscriminately. Yeah. And and if they if they want to have some kind of system where they get to pick and choose. Well, it should be a subscription-based thing, you know, like memberships yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. No, you're right. Like, if you are a person who's sensitive to something, right? Because people mm-hmm. are, and 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 I'm open to this. Like, I I completely accept this. If you're somebody, let's say, I don't know, you had a parent or grandparent that went through Alzheimer's, and you just don't want to hear about Alzheimer's, right? You should be able to filter that out. Um, so if somebody starts talking about that maybe you don't want to talk about it or you had a a child that died or something. It's acceptable for, for the person, the the receiver of information to be able to not have to see that. Um, But it doesn't work that way. The the way it works is if there's a couple people who don't like the idea of, you know, hearing about somebody's child dying, you know, now nobody can see that. And yeah. I think that's really harmful and it starts to kind of go down like a really dark well, tangent too. It's harmful for them too. Like I, I get it. Like in this age of technology, we, we probably could implement something on Facebook where you can basically create your own filters. Like I don't want to see these keywords automatically make them disappear for me, which yeah. would be way better than how they're doing things now, by the way. But that's just sticking your head in the sand. Like that's not really doing you any good. That's true. In fact, it, like exposure therapy is the way to deal with things. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's really important to, to like, if something is troubling you, you should face it. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I get, I get trauma and all that stuff and, and I'm not insensitive to it, but like, unless it's like complex PTSD or like, you could actually like just flip out and go insane from seeing it. Yeah. Um, I think you can just kind of like what you should learn to cope with it because sure. it, you're going to come across it, you know, like, well, yeah, that's true. Cause you know, there is no filter in real life. Like when people mm-hmm. are talking on the streets, you're going to hear it. Exactly. Um, and that's, that's why I never understood people that don't cuss around kids. It's like, they're going to hear it. Oh yeah, Eventually. in fact, they probably know cuss words you don't. Yeah, the more <laughs> you know? the more taboo you make it seem, the more they're gonna want to use it. So just yeah. say it. Well, and 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 I I'd be okay with people having filtration. Let, let's say you are dealing with something recent. Like, I mean, this is probably gonna automatically the bots on YouTube are automatically gonna age restrict this if I say this. But if you're dealing with a recent rape, um. Maybe you don't want to hear people talking about that for a while, right? Like, that's fine. Like, you should totally, machine learning can solve that. That This is what these bots do really well, actually, is, is identify these kinds of patterns. Oh, so, man, that sounds like a Black Mirror episode or something. Like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> you, you have, like, this implant where you can be like, I, I just want to filter out any instance of rape in real life. And then you, you do that, but then like, there's these predators that like realize all they have to do is walk up to you and say the word rape. And you just instantly get like roofied by your implant or something. And, like, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Cause you, you <laughs> that is, that's an interesting see, that's, idea. That's, that's the dangers of censorship. You're and not, a, you're it, not aware of what's coming. Uh, yeah. And it's a danger of avoidance too. Mm -hmm. Like you don't know what's actually happening around you and what people are thinking or talking about. And, and you don't have the opportunity to, to like counter it. Right. It's that whole, like, Oh, let's all the racists. Let's just kill them. Well, (laughs) but that, that isn't going to solve the problem. In fact, it might exacerbate it. You, we need to engage with people who we disagree with people who we feel are wrong that that's important. That's the way you reverse the course. Like you're not going to reverse the course by eliminating every single deviant 
variable, I guess. Like, you know, you, you get people who are racist, like, well, okay, if you kill them, sure, that particular person isn't there anymore. But what about all the other people? It, it, like, uh, and, and, and really think about it. Have you actually made a difference at all? No, no, of course not. Like that person. It, well, this is the, my personal belief is that the way people see the world, their, their beliefs are the sum total of their life experiences. Um, there, there are maybe there are a few odds and ends, a couple like legit evil people out there. But most people, the, the reason they see things the way they do is because they've experienced things in a certain way. And that kind of built them essentially. Um, and you can change that. Yes, it does require a bit of effort, and maybe that's lost on this generation. Is actually doing some work for a change, um, <laughs> but you know, like Daryl Davis, the the for every racist that you turn to a non-racist, like that they will affect hundreds of other people out yeah. there and and make a difference. Like it d- doesn't, you don't have to go and punch a Nazi, like every single Nazi out there. All you have to do is make one Nazi, not a Nazi. And they will then go and do the same thing. And uh, like this idea that, that, well, this kind of like goes right back into the whole censorship thing. Um, The idea that, Oh, you you just, you got to block this. Like, Oh, people can't see this. Well, no, they should. It's actually really important that you see this it's really important to like discuss things. Yeah. Be able to discuss freely. I want people who are hateful or angry or whatever to, to speak their mind because I want to be able to like respond to whatever they have to say, even if it's, even if it's something uncomfortable. Like there could be some exactly stuff. Cause I think, I think censorship, the, the rise of censorship, is probably what's creating so much divide in this country right now. Yeah. Because uh, the act of changing a person's mind is a cumulative long-term effect, mm-hmm. right? If if you're censoring out somebody that's a complete asshole and saying dumb shit, there's nobody seeing what he's saying to be like, hey, dude, you're wrong, and plant the right idea in his brain over and over and over again. So he's just in his echo chamber. Wait a minute. Why did you assume his gender? <laughs> no, no, you, you're right, totally Karen. right. <laughs> you're no, you're you're absolutely right though that the discussion is the way that you actually affect change. And you can't do that if certain phrases or uh, certain things are not allowed to be said or certain questions are never allowed to be asked. Like the, that's exactly how you change things. Why would you, why would you want to cut that out? Yeah. Like, I mean, you're right. The division is bred by censorship and filtering that, like, yeah. that because the, what does it do? Well, People never have any countering opinions. They, they it drives them into their echo chambers um then or it or it simply reinforces what they believe like if if you say something controversial and the system shuts you down will you be like well i must be right then because yeah you know the, <laughs> like and it, it just it reinforces caters, it it caters the sensitivity and and that's not necessarily a bad thing but um well i should say it caters the hypersensitivity yeah you know like if if somebody is saying something offensive to you like like directed at you in order to harm you that's a bad thing but if they say something that you personally find offensive that's not a bad thing that's your problem you know you're, like you're absolutely right yeah yeah that's very so, true like that's why i jokes don't offend me no. none of them in yeah, fact you, i you really I, can't offend me unless you're like actually attacking me yeah as as a person same same here you know like well and even then like 
I'm so comfortable with who I am that, or, I, you know, someone I love or whatever. But, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I honestly don't care. People can say whatever and it's like water off a duck's back. Like I, I really don't give a shit anymore. Um, <laughs> I used to, but you know, the thing is the, the thing that changed that um, was exposure was like having to face that uh, being uncomfortable around people and stuff. Um, and now I'm better for it. Like, I, I think that's a good thing. We, mm -hmm. we should be. Uh, it, like it shouldn't be a, a bad thing to be offensive. Um, I mean, in fact, isn't that what punk rock is all about? I mean, that's not even the right word for it. Like to be offensive implies that you're doing it on purpose to hurt somebody. No, you're right. Yeah. You know, no, like I, that's true because, because they're all, it, there needs to be a different word for it because all it is, is people who are having their feelings hurt um, by proxy effectively, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Because if you're not picking like singling out an individual and making fun of them, um, if you're just like making light of a particular thing, um, you're not really being offensive. I mean, be being offended is an act that is internal. Like it's something that, that you do yeah. is be offended at something. It's not something somebody does to you. Yeah. Um, and, and it's so funny because like we've, we've created these like, you know, types of people let's say that will like go on the war path to defend uh these hypersensitive others uh, who may or may not even be offended or even with an earshot of said offense uh, mm -hmm. using that term loosely uh <laughs> you know like you'll have like a a pale white person whiter than me be like you shouldn't say the word eskimo because uh, you know, the original meaning was was a slur. And of course, like, these are the same people that are like, words can change meaning over time. And, you know, this now means <laughs> racist things because it changes meaning over time. But Eskimo is always going to be a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> that That is a really good point. Oh, man. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. Like, the hypocrisy is just mind-numbing. Like, it's it's rife uh, like well and, and th this whole idea of like governments or big corporations and it, it is kind of funny that people defer to big corporations when like a few years ago they were the the evildoers you know like and now all of a sudden it's totally okay for the big corporations to decide what we see and don't see what we talk about and don't talk about i mean it's like fascistic corporatism at, at this point um but so you know crypto fascist <laughs> but but the idea of like trying to protect everyone protect everybody's feelings i i think is is inherently flawed and impossible and in trying to protect everyone's feelings you protect no one's feelings and create a system where nobody can say what they actually think you know, people get on social media and, okay, there are a few people who, who like just blurt out whatever they think and hit enter or tap the post button. Um, but, but a lot of people really consider like, Ooh, wait a minute. What are the implications of this? Like, like how are people going to view what I've said? And they want to candy coat it and say things that are uh, like acceptable to everybody. And I don't think that's a good thing. You you can't you can't compose any string of words without offending someone. You can't you can't write a cookbook without offending someone <laughs> because because somebody might not like the word moist or plump, or you know? or maybe the fact that you know you're writing a cookbook about some other group of people who you're not right. right? Like we're kind of Scandinavian ish. So if we were to write a cookbook about like, oh, 
the best Canadian recipes. I'm sure some Canadians would get offended. Like, oh, you're not Canadian. Like, but maybe, maybe I was a cook in Canada for 30 years. You know, <laughs> like just because I, my, my ancestors long ago came over on a boat thousands of years ago from, from the Scandinavian area d- doesn't mean that I don't know about local stuff in Canada, eh? Um, because <laughs> I, 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 I me i kind of the way i see things is like we're we are citizens of planet earth i don't see myself as a citizen of a country or i don't see myself as a nationality or some kind of race or anything it's like no i'm a human being i'm just a dude on this ball of dirt floating around in space we're all a bunch of dudes and dudettes or whatever you want to call yourself like whatever floats your boat you're erasing cultures (laughs) well not really no because cultures this is the thing like cultures are evolve over time and and the whole like tradition thing wait whoa we have to preserve this i i get it that's kind of nice but things evolve over time and, and cultures merge and blend and societies blend. And, and that's a good thing. That's how it's an engineering thing. Like we, we take all the best ideas and put them together and uh, weed out all the bullshit. Yeah. That that's good. Like, good. Ah, ah. the melting pot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I've, I've been, I've been against this whole idea since I was a kid, like in the early nineties when politically correct was, you know, kind of the buzzword of of the time. And, you know, you you don't hear that as often now, but it kind of morphed into this social justice warrior beast that we have now. Yeah. Or what I call hipster humanism where Mm -hmm. they're they're just trying to be more, humane and you know savvy than you were before you were well and and i wonder (laughs) i i would question a lot of people who are in the sjw camp like are you doing it because you really feel that uh like you have some kind of internal drive to make a change or is it because your peers are doing it or because you want to look good in front of other people and I yeah, would say it's, it's probably the latter, like in my experience, like based on my analysis, it's by and large the latter. Virtue signaling or yeah. mor- moral grandstanding, however you want to label it. It's yeah, it's yeah, basically yeah. just them with their peacock feathers being like sure. look at me. I'm really hip. <laughs> yeah, like people are doing it because it's fashionable. Mm-hmm. Um, not because they they the, you know the, this is the thing. I think one important distinction between people who do things for legitimate reasons or for uh and those who do things uh based on like societal pressure, it's like okay, well, what's the origin of your directive? Where where is that drive coming from? Is it coming from inside or is it coming from stuff you've seen on social media or big media or out there reading articles or something? Because if it isn't coming from within you, I don't think it's real. It, it's propaganda. It, it, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they'll, they'll get real high and mighty and they'll tell you that, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't get to dictate what people are offended by. Um, I, they've got a buzzword for that too. I can't remember right now. I usually just in one out in one ear and out the other with that crap, but it's uh Oh, like um, emotion policing or hmm. something like it's something policing. Um, but, but the, the thing is like, there has to be some logic to it, right? Like the, the word retarded. Um, yeah. has has unequivocally become like i mean it's called the r word now like it's <laughs> it's been vilified 
And, and of course it has been used as a slur, but in, in an obvious context when it is done so. Right. Mm -hmm. But the actual word, I mean, if, if you look at a fire extinguisher somewhere on there, it probably says retardant because it's an actual word with an actual meaning that actually applies to people with a retardation of their mental capabilities or cognitive well, yeah, capabilities. I mean, it, it's a, a technical term, like a scientific term. Re- retard means essentially to pull back. Um, You're and, a retard. Yeah. From the hangover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it, I, I mean, I don't want to make light of people's, situations if well and it does kind of go back it's contextual like yeah if you're singling somebody out and picking on an individual and you're calling them retarded like that that that's kind of that's wrong yeah um but if you use if there's a statement and you say oh you know like that stupid high school test that was retarded like how can you be knock. offended? Yeah. yeah. How can you be offended by that? that, that makes Are you offending sense. the test? Like, <laughs> yeah, a piece of paper. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, to be clear, I'm not, I'm not choosing who should be offended by what. I'm basically telling other people not to choose for other people what offends other people because they're Ooh, out there being yes. like, yeah, you're, you're being you're, like, you shouldn't say that because it might offend somebody else. Well, it's like, yeah, it might, it might not. Well, you know, they, that kind of goes back to that whole like white savior thing, which, yeah. which to me is oh. almost like super, like that is pretty exactly. fucking racist. But honestly. let me tell you, when I was living in the, the mid South, or you know, that's what they like to call it in Tennessee, I saw a lot of black people wearing All Lives Matter shirts. Mm-hmm. And up here in Washington, oh boy, a white person will be like, oh, that is racist. You better not say that around a black person because they're going to get offended. All well, of them. Yeah, All the black people. Well, and, and and you know, how can you be a representative of somebody, you know, if you're not anything like that person? Now, of course, melanin, I'd say that's an irrelevant factor. Really, it should be. Um, I, I, I don't think that people with like more melanin or less melanin are any different from each other. Really, there's people, um, but. This idea that oh you, you you have to represent you have to protect people and stuff, I, I think that does more harm than good. Yeah, um, and it's not denying the reality that there are people who care about melanin. Th- there are, yeah. And, yeah, and and there are definitely racist people out there. But the the way to solve that is to engage with them and you, like do the Daryl Davis thing. Like if if you're a black man you know, go and talk to the KKK, like make yeah. friends with them. And you know what? You might just single-handedly bring that entire organization to an end mm-hmm. just by making friends. Social um, justice warriors are a bit like hamster wheels. They're doing mm-hmm. a lot of effort, but they're getting nowhere. Yeah, that's uh, true. You know, like it, I mean, they have good intentions and all that, but it's it, the, the method you know where they're running to is the right idea, but they got to get off that wheel. <laughs> well, get, okay, yeah, they know where they're running to, but they don't know how to get there. That's yeah. the problem. Um, but you know, something you mentioned about like black people in the the south or the uh, south mid south, I guess, um, wearing all lives matter shirts. You know, there are this the very same people who are quote unquote anti racist would look at a black man wearing a all lives matter shirt as being, well, you're, you're, you know, some kind of coon or something, you know, like you're a, I don't know what, what the term is. I'm, I don't know. I'm not all up on the lingo, but um, pe- people feel like, oh yeah, those people are, they're, they're not being real to themselves essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, you know, these are human beings. Well, the the other glaring hypocrisy with all of this is the inherent like generalizations that 
those people are making, you know, those social justice warriors are making about the people that they're supposedly defending. Yeah. You know, to think all black people have to be offended by all lives matter. Oh, is well, probably a lot more racist than all lives matter. <laughs> I entirely agree. And in fact, to think that like all people who possess a particular feature, be it melanin or uh, whatever sexuality or, or hair color or your height or body weight or something like all of them must be homogenous and have a hive mind and think the same. That's bigotry. Yeah. That's, that's in fact more bigoted than the people who like are bigoted against those people. Like, I mean, do we need, is there no better definition, no better illustration of bigotry than that? Yeah. Um, you know, so how can you call yourself unbigoted at that point? And, uh, and we've known people in that camp and, and have been, you know, like, Hey, you know, that, that's actually kind of bigotry and they're like they're aghast they're like how dare you call me a bigot you know like i'm the social justice warrior i cannot be a bigot yeah. <laughs> it's a blanket generalization as soon as i put my social justice warrior cape on i'm anti-bigot <laughs> yeah yeah no you're absolutely correct in that that man that's a that's a lot of food for thought Man, oh, yeah, it, it, it really does tie well with censorship, though, and you know, cancel culture and all that stuff. It's all, it's all censorship in some well, form or another, and it harms people. <laughs> it, it definitely does. Uh, like the free flow of thought is important for evolution. Um, and yeah, whether it's irrelevant what the source of the censorship is, if it's some kind of ideological doctrine or political doctrine doesn't matter same harm is done either way anyway so we should be like strongly fighting for people to say their mind even if it makes us feel a little uncomfortable or or maybe maybe you know offends us or whatever and oh you like must you be a republican then <laughs> Well, and like, like you said, you know, if, if you're offended, that's your own problem. Mm -hmm. It's not the other person's problem. It's yours. The, the person just said what they're thinking. Like, it, it, it's up to you to digest what's being said and interpret it and respond to it or react to it however you can. And if every time someone says a particular thing or has a particular thought that you get all sweaty and shaky and stuff well you know maybe you need to fix that uh, <laughs> yeah you know um, I mean, or 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 at least try try to like have a conversation with those people and and maybe engage them and change their mind accepting that every time you attempt to change someone else's mind your mind might be changed as well yeah um yeah that that whole that whole phenomenon is is a bit like having like a, a one of those big sub sandwiches at the company meeting right and you walk over and you take a bite and it's got tomato in it and you hate tomato and you just throw your sandwich at your boss like there's a fucking tomato in here you asshole like, <laughs> like, like you're expecting people to read your mind and know what yeah. offends you and they, they should sure know anywhere near you. Like. They should totally know that I hate tomatoes because tomatoes are awful. You know, I, I think tomatoes are awful. So everybody else should. And if they don't, well, there must be something wrong with them. Yeah. You know, that for, for the record, I actually really don't like tomatoes in, in things like sandwiches and burgers, but you know, if somebody else loves it, more power to you, you know, like whatever. I, I, I get them, but I do kind of hate them mm -hmm. it's just because of the, the tough skin on them. Like you can't bite into a tomato slice and have it break. 
it the whole thing just comes out and then flops against your chin and like it's oh, massive. Good, it, yeah, tomatoes are slimy. I I don't. <laughs> now I do like diced tomatoes in uh, like nachos or something like that. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Um, same thing with onions. I fucking hate onions. Hate them. However, I love the taste of onions. So onion powder, things that have like little bits of onion here and there. Salsa is totally cool. Um, in fact, I've been known to eat in street. I've been known to eat street tacos, piled high with onions, and don't don't have a problem at all with it. It's context, you know. Like it depends on what I'm eating. But yeah, to to assume that there's, I don't know where this comes from, but it's this whole kind of assumption that if there's something you don't like, there must be some evil intent behind the the origin of that thing. Yeah. And that's where this whole like cancel culture and all this stuff comes from. I yeah. Think. Because it offends me. Uh, ergo, somebody did it on purpose. That's yeah, just like, to offend you. Yeah. No, that is, what is that? A false cause or whatever? Like, I think so. Yeah. Exact. Yeah. It, too much beer. But <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Well, we probably still have a little bit more logic than most people on social media. That's something I, I do want to like impart upon my kids is the importance of logic and critical yeah. thinking. Critical thinking. Holy shit, dude. Critical thinking is a dying art. And it's so sad. Like critical thinking, like figuring that out. And, mm-hmm. and getting to an understanding of a process of how to analyze the world around me and adjust what I think is how I am the person I am today. Yeah. Like I would be the dumbass Christian Republican that I was when I was a little kid. If, if, you know, <laughs> and, and I was honestly, I was troubled back then. Like the world seemed really scary and and like out of control like i had no control over it and now i'm like at peace i feel like yep okay the, it, it's kind of like the the dog drinking the coffee and the fire like this is fine <laughs> yeah, you know like okay i'll weather this storm um and and you know i i oh god i would never have engaged with somebody that i thought differently about back then and now it's like that is my favorite thing to do talk to people that think differently like oh man this is like a chess game this is a challenge game on i love it i i i miss the presence of philosophy classes in in colleges i think they're all pretty much gone the way of the dinosaur now Hmm. and it'd be great if they were in high schools and middle schools too, but yeah, like there was one, I was gonna say that. there was one quarter at the community college around here that right after high school, I, I took a critical thinking class. I was like, Oh, that sounds interesting. Um, it wasn't really on my radar yet. And then I signed up for a philosophy class and like a math class. It turned out the math class was logic and the philosophy class was some kind of combination of logic and critical thinking and then the critical mm-hmm. thinking. So like my whole quarter was just, it drilled into me logic and critical thinking. And ever since then I've been this asshole. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think you're an asshole at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people do. <laughs> I, that's, that's, that's crazy talk. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the, um, it, but I can persuade people and not even like have to be a, a dirtbag lying used car salesman lawyer about it. Like I can well, no. actually like make a point, you know, and that actually brings up uh, like a really important um, focus, I guess that, 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 that you, you persuasion. Uh, like you don't have to 
Oh man. Okay. Well, There's... you just gotta you just gotta learn to detach emotion from decision making. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and from you know, the it's, it's fine to feel yeah. the emotion, but you gotta re- be able to recognize, just be aware of it, and be able to think around it. And, well, yeah, and and not be uh, affected by it, and not use it as a weapon against other people to affect them. Right. Yeah, um, I think that's and it's a important. constant work in progress. Like no, I took, it, I took those classes twenty years ago, and I'm still working on it. Yeah, know? well, exactly. That that's the thing. It's like you know, no matter how much you think you know, there's a whole entire universe that you don't know. Um, there's a lot more to know. So. Like you don't have all the answers. Um, the the way you find the answers is by having conversations, especially with people who challenge what you believe. That's important. And to just cut it out, like, oh, that makes me uncomfortable. I better censor that shit. Well, that's exactly how you stay a Luddite for the rest of your life. And you die a Luddite, like never knowing the truth. And man oh uh yeah wow uh, we want censorship to logic interesting i i think they're actually connected well yeah because i don't think there is any censor or any logic in censorship and and well there's no censorship in logic <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> the, the converse is true as well well yeah if you had censorship in logic like yeah, but I, I, I mean, like calling out a logical fallacy. Some some people might think of that as censorship, but you're not you're not deleting it. No, no. Actually, in a you're, debate or with you're redirecting you, it. You know, well, like you're not getting rid of the information. You're just saying, hey, you're misapplying. Yeah, yeah. That that's the thing is like you have to justify your position when you're having a debate it, using logic and reason like you can't just say oh i'm offended and and well that's good enough that no that doesn't count you have to have a logical explanation and and be able to explain yourself um which yeah oh man <laughs> and i feel like we haven't really gone far enough on the topic of uh like censorship well we didn't even talk about youtube no oh man and uh how like a few months ago they started age restricting and demonetizing all of our material that mentioned 9-11 specifically 9-11 of all things which yeah. does kind of make you wonder, like, why is that? Yeah. Like, the the song I did, Tears of an Eagle, as a tribute to the people who died in 9-11, nothing more. Mm-hmm. It was just a music video. And that was age-restricted. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That was one of the most beautiful songs. Like, uh, when it's I was got, like, editing... like, 16,000 views, but Dude. can't monetize it. Oh, <laughs> When I was editing that episode and, and, and getting all the names, typing them in and scrolling everything with the Tears of the Eagle song, like, oh, my God, I was fucking crying. Like, <laughs> oh, that was some heavy stuff. Uh, I, I don't know why. Why is that age rest- restricted? But then there's so many other things that are not. Well, yeah, like hey, there have been. I mean, not to minimize it, there have been way bigger tragedies. And those aren't censored. Yeah. Like, that that one is just, like, I don't know, like, kind of the uh, hood ornaments or something, you know, like. Yeah. I knew it! The globalists are out to get us. Alex Jones was right. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Fucking Alex Jones. Oh, if we could have him on the show, man. Oh, that would be awesome. The, the dude, the dude. Oh man, he's 
he's a rare gem. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah. Like I, that's the thing. Like I, I enjoy talking to people. I mean, in fact, I find the most entertaining and enlightening conversations are people who I totally disagree with. Like having to justify what I think and explain myself to people uh, really reinforces and, and, and does ha- has caused evolution of what I think over time. I mean, we've, you and I like our conversations, like I definitely don't think the same way I did back like 20 years ago. Oh, me neither. Be, be, because of you and I having conversations because you yeah. challenge me and that challenge is how you learn things. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've changed my mind based on things, you know, that you and I have discussed and, and change them back and sometimes change them back to back <laughs> or change, change them back, back, ch- change them back from changing them back. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> well, and, and I don't care if you change your mind to agree with me. I care more about you changing your mind closer to the truth, like reality, like a, a fundamental understanding of how things are. Because I'm struggling to figure that out myself. So if you have some kind of epiphany and a revelation where you're like, dude, oh my God, that like it makes so much sense now. (laughs) Like I would love that. That that's what I hope for. And and so by sharing what I know, you know, and 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 trying to generate thought and, and questions and things like that, it's like you know, we're all eventually leaning closer to the truth because that's all I care about. If you care about being right, um, you, the viewers, um, well, that that's a problem. Uh, Then you're probably never going to be right. Like that, that was one of the hardest things to let go of is this idea that like, people have to think the same way I do. Um, I, you know, sometimes I think thousands of years ago or whatever, dudes like Plato and Socrates sitting around talking with their buddies. It was probably just like this. this I show. think it was. <laughs> not, I, not to, not to, you know, like, be all egotistical like we're some of the greatest philosophers of all time which we are but <laughs> <laughs> yeah we we are yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i think you're right like that that is probably how things were people sitting around drinking beer hanging out in a public place like talking about their differences of opinion and yeah it's it's entertaining like it's yeah. engaging and and uh life changing you know like it, it was okay some of my favorite things about this show have been watching it with other people mm-hmm. and seeing how they end up ignoring the rest of the episode entirely and having their own conversation about the topic <laughs> I, I love that yeah that's awesome oh man I never you thought know, about and, that. And that's that's kind of like the dream, right? Like it, it is. <laughs> well, that, that that's kind of. I mean, it, it, it's kind of what I hope for, and I would imagine you do. But I'm not going to put words in your mouth yeah. or make assumptions because you know how that goes. But, but you know what's required for that though is people like not watching the show alone. Mm-hmm. You know, like we almost should be like in theaters every week yeah <laughs> oh no that actually it should be like a round table discussion yeah like a uh you you have dinner and you wheel out the old crt tv and you watch ksm <laughs> like and everybody's yeah, got to talks- open that restaurant yeah totally <laughs> oh man 
Oh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. A censorship free discussion environment. You know, just picking a random topic and, you know, like family, certain families have done this, right? Like mm -hmm. they'll have like a, a, a rule where everyone sits down at the dinner table every night and somebody picks a topic and they have a discussion over dinner. Yeah. And, you know, like that's all this is, right? Only beer instead of dinner. Exactly. Well, beer is good food after all. <laughs> <laughs> Especially a uh, dark beer. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> wait, you're onto a different one, is it? Yeah. Elysian? Uh Black Raven Cocoa Jones Coconut Porter. Yeah. Huh. Wait, you like coconut? Ugh. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i can't stand coconut milk because it's, it's a little bit too overpowering like with whatever you're using it with but i don't mind coconut i i don't either i mean i don't like coconut like mounds bars and stuff and yeah yeah no, but you know, back when I used to drink like the fruity coffee drinks, I liked uh, mochas with uh, coconut flavoring added into them. It's not all that similar from uh, dark beer. Yeah, kind of similar. <laughs> yeah, just a depressant rather than a stimulant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but somehow it's still a stimulant. <laughs> Hmm. Well, okay. I'm just going to be a biologist for a moment. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a, a nervous system depressant, not a mood depressant. Okay. And, and the same with the stimulants. It's a nervous system stimulant, not a mood stimulant. You know, you could drink coffee and be fucking the Robert Smith from The Cure. You mm -hmm. know, like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that does kind of illustrate why things are uh, personal. Mm -hmm. Like the individual, different things operate on people and affect them in different ways. And to make the assumption that the things that affect you are going to affect another person exactly the same way, I, I, I would say that's fallacious, like and maybe potentially dangerous, especially if you're going to like start killing people because of that yeah oh man you know that's a good example kind of like retarded of of words being like easily misinterpreted you know like people hear depressant and they instantly go to emotion mm -hmm. when it when it could just mean like you're pushing down on something and making it harder to produce something you know like <laughs> yeah oh man oh that Jeez, that that's look, look how we tie everything together. It's so awesome. I know, totally. <laughs> that it, like I feel like we we we've, we've only just scratched the surface on this topic. Like th this is <laughs> there is so much more we could talk about, um, but we're like kind of an hour in now. Yeah. So maybe that's a a good point to kind of wrap things up. I mean, I'd like to see other comments and, you know, maybe there's going to be another episode based on the comments. Um, I, I like that, like responding to what, what people have to say, different people, especially people I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know what we should do as a joke in this episode is like every red dwarf joke, just like beep it out. Like <laughs> 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 You know, here's the thing. If you have a sentence and you do the sensor beep like on random words and stuff, people will fill in the blanks and they're going to assume what you're saying. <laughs> and that's kind of telling. Like, all you have to do is beep that out and someone's going to be like, you were like foraging and, and they're going to think you said fuck. <laughs> like... Yep. Oh man. Well, yeah, I think that's probably I think we've had enough beer for one night. Yeah. Australian for 
oppression. Schnarf <laughs> <laughs> schmear. <laughs> Oh man, if people don't know what's happening in Australia, like oh, who, something going on there. Oh. Uh yeah. But mm. that's a topic for it. That is that's is a huge topic for another time. Oh, I haven't heard of it at all. Oh man. Oh, it's uh it's about to be You know how Australia was originally a penal colony? Yeah. It's about to be a the nouveau penal colony. What? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, shit's getting real there. <laughs> oh, man. Well, but I, I don't want to diverge into something completely different. Um, That's interesting. For a very pro- I, progressive continent. <laughs> Well, they've gotten so progressive, they've wrapped around back to the other side. <laughs> um, so, oh, man. Well, we'll, uh, I, I will leave it on, uh, I recommend looking up what's going on in Australia. Um, Tastes like it's got butter inside. Oh my god, Australian toaster biscuits. Those were so good. Oh, there's so, I and the other day I was telling somebody about this, like how good Australian toaster biscuits are. <laughs> and she was like, Oh, we should get some. And we went to the store. Oh, they've been gone find for them. ages. Yeah. They're gone. Like they don't exist. Like, oh my god, that was the best thing it was I like have an, ever eaten. It was like an English muffin that didn't taste like the Sahara Desert. Like it was, oh, yeah. it was actually like some moisture in, in these oh, English so muffins. Oh, good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And your description is 100% on point. Like that <laughs> is exactly what it tastes like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to find them and I'm going to eat them. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't think something that's been gone for well over a decade is is really going to be good to eat anymore. If 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 somebody yeah. just had like a collector's item bag of Australian toaster biscuits, they're they're not good anymore. Yeah. But, but <laughs> there could be. Well, yeah, you could buy something on eBay and like uh, roll the dice, I guess. Um, but <laughs> like got freezer burn from like like ten years and like yeah. a minus eighty. Yeah, <laughs> like. I mean, but, but there could be some kind of analog. There might be something close enough. It's like the. Um, I haven't favorite... found anything yet. It, and and that's sad. That that reminds me of my favorite thing when I was a kid growing up: the carnation breakfast bars. Hmm. And and that was an '80s thing. The best fucking like if you have never had a carnation breakfast bar, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is so good, so tasty, um, delicious. There is an online petition to aimed at Carnation to bring them back. Um, I don't know that they can though. They, when they brought don't. the Twinkie back. Well, that was only like a hiccup in the timeline. The Carnation Breakfast Bar has been gone for like decades now. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's that gonna... good fail though. Like, I weird. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all the best stuff goes away and all the shit stays behind. Yeah. And <laughs> and somehow you still have those like brown and blue wafers that don't taste like anything. <laughs> like that's still a thing, right? Like, I know. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, so look those things up. Um I, I I I implore people to look. What's going on in Australia? Australian toaster biscuits and carnation breakfast bar. Yep, <laughs> yep. Look them all up. <laughs> um, you will be simultaneously horrified and delighted, uh, <laughs> as well as censorship and uh, all the other stuff we want. And to food and <laughs> things like that. And Alex Jones and the Prison Planet. <laughs> 
<laughs> mm. Man, you're right. We should totally have him on the show. That would be entertaining. <laughs> that would that would be very entertaining. He probably wouldn't like how I portrayed him in the uh, parody video I I did on our channel. Um, I don't believe in science. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I uh, the Queen's right song. I don't believe in love that I mm-hmm. redid a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if he's a free thinking person, he'd probably appreciate the humor in that. <laughs> um, because that's the thing, it's like I appreciate people's mockery of me. Like, I, if you're clever, I appreciate it. Like, if you're just mean, no, no, that that that's bullshit. Um, but you know, if you have some kind of clever way of making fun of me, um, that's pretty humorous, and I'll give you kudos and points for that. The rhyming was clever. The prose was clever. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, you know, I mean, we'll have to beep that one out because that was a Star Trek reference. So So far, we don't have to deal with uh, that level of censorship. I mean, I feel like there's so many more things we could talk about. I mean, we kind of talked about, from the standpoint of censorship, we mostly talked about self-censorship. Um, but then again, it's all self-censorship, even if it's government or the state or whatever. It's all... Yeah, we, did, we didn't really go into... I mean, this country, to be honest, hasn't experienced any government censorship any government level censorship not in a big way no no i mean like the the warning labels on cds and shit like that is it's not censorship it, yeah. well and the, you know when you're talking about um certain kinds of topics or nudity or something maybe I mean, that's kind of the fcc i guess that is kind of government isn't it yeah i mean that's that's a whole other thing we've got a minute microscopy on that actually yeah uh (laughs) (laughs) so yeah that could be an episode yeah i mean i think this actually covered kind of mostly what i was concerned about talking about yeah um and it went in different directions like i had no idea we would end up here we did have a uh, a guest request um, to talk about music censorship at some point too, but that's that is yeah no that's a good point. Yeah. We should probably make that something to talk about as well. Mm-hmm. The parental advisory, yeah, which <laughs> I, I I'll probably bring it up then, but you know thinking about it. It's like, well, as a teenager, you're going to buy the albums that have that advisory notice advising you to not watch it or listen to it. Like, that that's actually like a draw. Well, it, yeah, but there, there are parents, like, you know, my mom, uh, I had to fight tooth and nail to buy uh, Appetite for Destruction on cassette tape and... Uh, <laughs> And the and the White Snake album uh, mm-hmm. self title, uh, I think that also had a curse word in it somewhere. So it had like, the label, like, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like it had very very little. It was actually kind of kind of safe, um, mm-hmm. but yet people saw the sticker and interpreted in their minds like what it meant and oh oh, no my kid can't see this thing it's like (laughs) okay but your kid is seeing way worse stuff every day all day and they're talking about it on the playground white snake had an album called slide it in we can't we can't (laughs) not put a sticker on this one yeah (laughs) oh man 
Yeah, I think, like you had said at the beginning of this episode, there are a lot of angles here. Like, I don't think we could possibly cover them in this time. Nah. And I think we're going to, we're going to come back to this one. Uh, Cause this is, this is a really important and good topic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, uh, thanks for deep sync diving with us into censorship and, and thanks for not being a, Goddamn sick, perverted son of a bitch and asshole licking duck fucking dick sucking piece of shit. <laughs> Sorry if all that was beeped out, but <laughs> it might not be. I mean, <laughs> I almost kind of want to like test the YouTube algorithm and just let it ride um, and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, you know, if there's beeps towards the end, uh, well, that means that YouTube is gotten a little bit more puritan than you might <laughs> like them to be um but if not well you know words are words um and you know sticks and stones can break your bones but words can't hurt you remember that yeah oh, what happened to that mm. <laughs> i know you are but am i <laughs> yo mama <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we should do an ep- episode like all focused on yo mama jokes. Oh man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think we've uh we've uh aged this topic beyond its extension. Um yeah, oh man. Well, so if anybody has anything to add, um add it down there in the comments down below, you know, like just scroll up and type what you want to say. Um, you know, I wouldn't censor you, but YouTube might. So <laughs> be ready for that. If you're posting on Facebook, well, get ready for the same um, and yep. be ready to justify your position. Um, and we should. We absolutely should like fight for that shit because once it's gone, it's gone forever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's my, that's my speech. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, stick around for the song on the way out, which might have some dirty words in it. And uh, I would hope it would. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have a good night.